Hi, and welcome to Lesson 5-6, where we will be exploring parallel and perpendicular lines. Our goal today is I can write the equation of a line that is parallel or perpendicular to a given line. Let's first talk about the definition of perpendicular. When two lines are perpendicular, they intersect at a perfect 90-degree angle. Okay. Let's investigate parallel and perpendicular lines. All right, in your notes, let's take a look at these two lines, y equals 2x plus 1 and y equals 2x minus 7. We're going to graph them on the coordinate plane, and we're going to see what we notice. Let's begin with the first one. The y-intercept is positive 1, so we're going to start with a point there. Then the slope is 2, so we're going to rise 2 and run 1. Again, rise 2 and run 1 and again, and we'll connect that line all the way across the coordinate plane. Let's go to the next line. The intercept is at negative seven. So way down here at negative seven, I'm gonna plot a point. Then notice the slope is the same. So I'm gonna rise two, run one, rise two, run one, and I'm just gonna plot a few points along the line, and then I'm going to connect them and draw that line all the way across the coordinate plane. What do you notice? The lines are parallel. Yeah, parallel lines have the same steepness, therefore they have the same slope. So when two lines have the same slope, they are going to be parallel, which means they're going to run on forever and never touch each other. They will have the same slope, but different intercepts. All right, let's take a look at the next set of lines. Let's begin by graphing the first one y equals 3 fourths x minus 1. Let's draw an intercept right at negative 1. And then the slope is 3 fourths. So we're going to rise 3 and run 4 to the right and plot another point. We'll do that again. Rise 3, run 4. I know I'm a little off the graph. That's OK. Let's just draw a line all the way across the coordinate plane. OK, we're going to go to the next line. Now we have a y-intercept at 2, so go ahead and plot a point at 2. OK, the slope now is negative. We're going to rise 4 and run 3 to the left. So I'm going to rise up 4 and 3 to the left because it's a negative slope. Make a point, and we'll just draw a line clear across the coordinate plane. Now notice that these two lines, because they go on forever, they're going to intersect. And notice that they will intersect at a perfect 90 degree angle. That means they're perpendicular. Let's talk about the slopes. The slopes are opposite reciprocals. They're opposite being that one is positive and one is negative. One slants upward while the other falls downward. But do you notice the fractions 3 fourths and 4 thirds? They're reciprocals of each other. So as long as you have two slopes that are opposite, one positive, one negative, and they are reciprocals of each other, they will always be perpendicular when you graph them. Let's summarize. Parallel lines, like in the picture below, have the same slope, the same steepness. So they're never going to touch each other. They'll be parallel. They must have different y-intercepts, though. Perpendicular lines, notice their slopes. One must be positive, one must be negative, and they need to be reciprocals of each other, opposite reciprocals. And if they have slopes like that, they will always be perpendicular when you graph them. Okay, now that we know something about parallel and perpendicular lines and that we have to watch out for the slope, let's do some examples where we're applying this new information. Okay, let's take a look at number one, two, and three in our notes. Notice we're being asked, are the lines parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Well, we know what parallel means. We know what perpendicular means. What does neither mean? Well, it can mean one of two things. If two lines are not parallel or perpendicular, they could be the exact same line where one is graphed on top of the other, and that's coinciding. The other thing that could happen is the two lines just intersect. They will cross each other, but it will not be at a 90 degree angle. Okay, let's begin. Let's figure out what kind of lines we have going on in the first example. Well, in order to tell if they're parallel, perpendicular, or neither, we have to compare the slopes. Well, it's pretty obvious in this second one right here that the slope, because it's written y equals mx plus b, is two-thirds. But it's not so obvious in the top one because 
we can't tell the slope. But you know what? I bet that if we take this first equation, we can easily write it into slope-intercept form. We can just solve for the y. It's as easy as dividing by 2 everywhere on both sides of the equation. So I have negative 3 halves x, and then the y-intercept would be plus 3. Okay, so I just took this equation and I rewrote it so that it is in the form where I can tell the slope. All right, so slope of this one right here, negative 3 halves. So we've got a positive 2 thirds and a negative 3 halves. Well, they can't be parallel because they're not the same. But let's check perpendicular. They are opposites of each other. One's positive, one's negative. Are they reciprocals of each other as well? Yes, they are. So for this one, these lines are perpendicular. They're going to intersect at a perfect 90 degree angle. All right, let's take a look at number two. Are the graphs of these two lines parallel, perpendicular, or neither? All right, again, we have to check the slope. So with the first line, we can tell that the slope is 3 fourths because it's written in y equals mx plus b. So we know the slope is 3 fourths. But the second line, that's in uh, standard form. So we're going to have to convert it. Let's just go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go 4x minus 3y equals 9. And we're just going to rewrite that equation so that it is in the same form, y equals mx plus b, and we can see what the uh, slope is. So solving for y, we're going to minus the 4x. I'm going to drop down the minus 3y. In this over here, I'm going to put minus 4x plus 9. And then again, we're going to solve it for y by dividing everything by negative 3. So we get y equals, now the slope pops out nicely for me here, it's 4 thirds. And then the intercept is negative 3. Okay, so I just took this second equation here and I had to do a little work, I had to convert it, but now I can compare the slopes. All right, let's check for parallel. Are they the exact same slope? No, they're not, so they're not going to be parallel lines. Let's check for perpendicular. If they're perpendicular, they're going to be opposite reciprocals. Well, notice they are reciprocals of each other, but they must be opposite. One has to be positive, one has to be negative, and that is not true. So they're not parallel, they're not perpendicular, they're neither. In this case, they are going to intersect each other. It's just that they're going to intersect not at a 90-degree angle. So we're going to choose neither for this. All right, let's take a look at number three. Okay, again, we've got uh, two equations where we're being asked parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So with this one, the second equation is written in slope-intercept form, so I can easily find the slope here, but the first one is not. Uh, so let's just take that and we're going to rewrite it right over here. 6y equals negative x plus 6. I'm going to convert it. This is pretty easy here. I just have to divide by 6 everywhere. Remember that this is a negative 1, and so my slope is negative 1 6 x, and the intercept is positive 1. Okay, so I just took it, what they gave me, and I converted it, so now I can see the slope really nicely is negative 1 6. All right, well... This slope is negative 1, 6, and this slope is negative 1, 6. So you probably want to say parallel, right? Well, there's one more thing you need to double check. Look at the y-intercepts. To be parallel, they have to have different y-intercepts. If they have the same y-intercept, then they're going to be the exact same line, and they would be on top of each other. They'd be coinciding. So they do have the same slope, different intercepts. So yes, they are parallel. All right, so there's three. Let's take a look at number four now. So those last three examples, we were just comparing two lines, deciding what kind of lines they were based on their slope. Here we go. We've got number four. What is an equation in slope-intercept form, just for reference there, of a line that passes through the point 12, 5 and is parallel to the graph of this line? Wow, lots going on there. So we want an equation in this form right here. I'm just going to start off with a blank equation so we can work on filling in what we know. 
okay? We want an equation in this form of a line that has to pass through this point and it must be parallel to this graph. Okay, so what do we know about parallel lines? Well, we know that parallel lines have the exact same slope. So if we're looking for a line that's parallel to this one, it's going to have the exact same slope as this line. So we do know the slope of our parallel line will be two thirds. Okay, but what we don't know is where is this parallel line gonna cross the y-axis? What will the intercept be? Hmm, well this line that we're trying to find ha it has to go through this point 12 and five. So this has to be a point on the line we're looking for, which means it has to be a solution to this line. And because it's a solution, we can take that point and plug it in for x and y. We've done something like this before, haven't we? So the y-coordinate 5, I'm just going to drop down the slope. We're multiplying it by x. Our x is 12. And then I'm going to write plus b in this little box here, okay? Let's figure out what intercept does a line that has a slope of two-thirds and goes through this point have? Okay, so if I'm multiplying, I'm going to make this a fraction. And I've got 3 and 12 that are both divisible by 3. 2 times 4 is 8. I'm just going to write down my work here. It's important to keep all this nice and neat. Now, to get the b, I'd have to take away the 8. And I would get b is equal to 5 minus 8, which is negative 3. So the intercept would be negative 3. All right. So what I did here was I figured out that the equation that's parallel to this given equation and goes through that point is now this line right here. y equals 2 thirds x minus 3. All right. I want to give you a visual of what we just did. So we'll hang on here. All right. We were given this original line, y equals 2 thirds x minus 1. So what I did here was I graphed y equals 2 thirds x minus 1. It's this black line right here. What we did was we found out the parallel line must have the same slope. We figured out by plugging in this point that the intercept of that parallel line would have to be negative 3. So what I did here was I graphed that negative 3. I get, use the same slope. And do you see how it goes through the point 12, 5? We are absolutely correct. This equation will be parallel to our given line and go through the point 12, 5. Pretty cool, huh? I think so. All right, that's number 4. Let's go to 5. Okay, very similar question. What is an equation in slope-intercept form of the line that now passes through 215, this point, and it has to be parallel to this graph? Okay, so we want our, our answer in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to start off by just writing a blank slope-intercept form. You guys, I think this is so helpful if you just start off with a blank equation and then you just work on filling in the information, our slope and intercept, as we go. Okay, so what we know is that it must be parallel to this line right here. And we know that parallel lines have the exact same slope. Well, just by looking at this equation, you notice it's in standard form. Can you tell what the slope is when it's in standard form? No, we can't. So we're going to have to convert this equation so that it is in slope-intercept form so we can figure out what's the slope of this line. Okay, so I'm going to just solve for y. Let's minus the 5x. Over here we have negative 5x plus 10. We're going to divide by 2 everywhere. y equals negative 5 halves x plus this intercept would be 5. Okay, now all I did here was I took the line that they gave us and I just converted it. It's the exact same line. It's just in a different form. Now we can see the slope. Okay, so the slope that they're giving us is negative 5 halves. And if we want to try and find a parallel line, we know that the parallel line we're trying to find has to have the same slope. So I'm going to write negative 5 halves in the slope spot. 
Okay, now what we need to find is what's the intercept of this new line that's parallel to this one. We know they have to have the same slope, right? They do, but they have to have different intercepts to be parallel. So we know that we want this new line to pass through this point. So this point is a solution to this line. So all we have to do, just like we did before, is to plug this point into the equation. So y coordinates 15. This is multiply here. I'm going to multiply by the x coordinate, which is 2, plus b, which is what we're trying to solve for. We're trying to find the intercept. Okay, I need to simplify here and make this fractions. When I multiply, I can simplify, divide by 2 here and here, multiply across. Negative 5 times 1 is just negative 5. The, new, the denominator is 1. Okay. Now to get b, I'd have to add 5. And so b is equal to 15 and 5 make 20. So we got intercept of 20. So I'm going to go back up here. Intercept is 20. So what is the equation in slope-intercept form of the line that passes through this point and is parallel to this point? Well, parallel, they're going to have the same slope. And if it goes through this point, it will have an intercept of 20. So my final answer would be y equals negative 5 halves plus 20. There we go. Not too bad. Use an algebra. All right, number six. Number six here, we're going to have some multiple choices. Now we're moving on to perpendicular. Which equation represents a line that passes through this point and is perpendicular to the graph of this line? We have some choices, right? Well, let's look at what we're given here we have the word perpendicular. It has to be perpendicular to this graph. Well, when we see the word perpendicular, let's think slope, okay? Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. So if this slope is one third, what would the slope of the perpendicular line need to be? Well, it would have to be opposite, so it would have to be negative, and it has to be the reciprocal of one third, which would be three over one. So we're looking for a line that has a slope that is negative three. Well, let's look at the choices. Ah, uh, it can't be A and it can't be B. It has to be C or D, okay? Because these two lines has, have a slope of negative three, but we're not sure what the intercept is going to be. The line that we're interested in is the line that passes through the point two, four. So let's start by writing a blank equation. Y equals slope X plus intercept. Okay, what do I know? I know the slope has to be negative 3, right? But I don't know if the intercept's going to be negative 2 or 10. I'm not sure. What information are they asking here for? It has to pass through the point 2, 4. Okay, so this line has to have 2, 4 along it. This has to be a solution. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before, four parallel lines. I'm going to take this point 2, 4, and I'm going to plug it in. 4 is the y. The x is 2 plus b. Let's solve. This is negative 6. To get the b by itself, I add 6. And so b equals 10. So what I'm looking for is an intercept of 10. And if you look down here, it's not c. It is going to be choice d. All I had to do was plug in the point. So my equation is y equals negative 3x plus 10. Now I want to give you visual people an idea of what we just did. Okay, so here's a graph. The original equation that they gave me was y equals 1 third x minus 1. So I graph that right here. It's in black. Okay, negative 1 intercept, 1 third slope. What we did was we found the perpendicular line. We knew that the slope had to be the opposite reciprocal, which is negative 3. And it had to pass through the point 2, 4. And do you see that when we make a line that goes through the point 2, 4 with a slope of negative 3, it's perfectly perpendicular. We have a nice 90 degree angle right here when the two lines intersect. Pretty sweet. Algebra got us the answer again. <laughs> okay, last one, number seven, and we're going to see perpendicular again, and then we'll do a quick summary. All right, which equation represents the line that passes through this point now and is perpendicular to this graph? Okay, We've got this. 
perpendicular to this graph. We got to pay attention to the slope. We want our answer in slope intercept form. So I'm just going to draw a blank equation. We're going to fill in what we know. Okay, so if it's perpendicular, it's got to be opposite reciprocal. So if this one's negative, that means this slope has to be positive, and it's just the reciprocal. So I'm just going to flip it around, and it's going to be 6 fifths. Okay, so I have the slope here of 6 fifths, but I don't know where it's going to cross the y-axis. Okay, now it's asking us to find the equation of the line that's perpendicular. Got it. Got the slope, and it has to pass through this point. So this point must be a solution on this line. So I'm going to plug that point into this equation. The y is 15, okay, times x. The x is 10 plus the b, which is what we're trying to solve for. Okay, so because we're multiplying fractions here, 10 over 1, we can simplify, divide by 5, get 1, divide this by 5, get 2, and then when I multiply, I have 12 plus b. Okay, no, so I'm going to solve for the intercept, minusing 12, and I get 3 equals b, so my intercept is 3. All right, so let's write our answer here. The perpendicular line will have the opposite reciprocal slope, 6 fifths, and then we found the intercept to be positive 3. Very good. So you notice how we first found the slope, we put the slope in, then we plug the point in. Okay, so you first want to change the slope, then plug the point. And we end up with this being the equation of the line that's perpendicular going through that point. Excellent. Okay, let's summarize. So parallel lines, remember they have the same steepness, so they're going to have the same slope. Perpendicular lines are going to intersect at a 90 degree angle. So they are going to have opposite reciprocal slopes. Thank you so much for joining me for lesson 5-6. I hope you learned something about parallel and perpendicular lines today. Have a great day.